Hello and welcome to Series 3 of Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. So as has become traditional, I'm going to spend the first episode, or the zeroth episode should we say, doing a bit of a sort of a, a recap over what's happened in the base beforehand and sort of bring you up to up to speed in case for any, any new viewers on the channel, or for that matter anyone who's been watching for a while and can't remember exactly what's been going on. So let's start off on Norvis because that's where um, everything started with, um, for, for, the, for the factory. So. Here we go. This is the this is the this is the state of the factory so far. The main part of it here in the middle is uh, this is my main bus that's producing all of the everything that I need. And I've got the various stations in as you'd have typically have with most factories where you'd, we're dropping off coal and um, copper and steel and iron and then um, and I thought stone bricks as well, but I can't see them at the moment. Um, and they're all being fed into the into the factory along here. Then we've also got a sort of secondary drop off station up here where we're dropping off some of the more um, the things that require a bit more processing, and therefore they, the, the things that the, what there wasn't room for when I originally did it. So here we're dropping off plastic and three types of circuits, dropping off stone, and dropping off uh, sulphur. And all of these are actually seem to be working quite well at the moment. I'm um, <laughs> slightly surprised. So those are all being fed down here. We've got a massive f facility here that's creating the glass from the uh, from the stone, um, and we're also making some ammunition. Some of the early sciences over here. So this is all sort of fairly untouched from when I, up to about here at least, certainly, but it's basically untouched from when I sort of first put it down. I did of course have all the mining and um, and at one point smelting in this area here, but as the base expanded and that those are no longer enough, I've sort of moved all that off to, to elsewhere and now I've just got trains dropping the, uh, the plates off. Along here we've got a small facility here making the stone bricks that I need. <laughs> Blimey, that shows how old this is. This is still running off the um, off stone furnaces. And then along here, green science. We were doing all the ground-based research here at one point. I could probably rip all this up and send all the um, all the science packs from here up into space to get rid of the, to, to, to tidy them up and get them used. But you know, I don't think that's necessary. I'm making steel furnaces and medium power poles, all the train stuff, plumbing stuff, um, grey science. And this is, I used to be making uh, red circuits here, but I, I since um, put, dropped in the uh, the belt here that's just pulling them straight off the, off the train that you saw earlier. And so because of that, this area has just sort of languished. And it's it may be a sort of sign of laziness, but it just doesn't seem worth tidying these things up. The, the space there's so much space available, it just doesn't feel worth going in here and ripping and ripping out all these machines, even though they're not actually doing anything anymore. And then we carry on up here. What are we making here? We're making uh, steam engines, boilers, and presumably steam engines around here. Um, and that again isn't being used anymore because um, because I've moved mostly onto nuclear and solar now. Then we're making all of the inserters here. And now this is sort of still all being used because once you get up to uh, filter stack inserters, that's as high as they go, and there's no no extra levels to that. So there's no need to build any further. It's just it's just all there and available. Explosives, rockets, more science, more stuff for the science. Um, all the belts are being made here. Now I think it's about time I started making blue belts as well because uh, I think some of some of the things I've got planned for this series are going to require slightly faster belts, and I don't want to use space belts on the ground because they're so expensive. But as you can see, I left in the extra machines here, ready to ready to build those at uh, at whatever point that I'm ready to have them. So it's not going to be a massive effort to extend that across. Although I am going, probably going to need more uh, more gears. Assembly machines. I've not got the tier three ones on here. They're they're being made up further up because they require some odd stuff, and I'm only making them in very small quantities. Acid batteries. This clearly is not making enough ba make, making the batteries fast enough. I need to, something needs to be extended here, and by the look of it, it's I need need to have more sulfuric acid being made. Um, bots. They're important. Concrete. Um, oh, got some uh, heat shield tiles. That's suffering. Oh, that's because I ran out of sulphur, um, and I've only, it's only been relatively recently that I've uh, fixed the sulphur supply. So that's now trickling back in here, and we'll get a bit more of that through. Got solar being made up here in massive quantities, along with logistics chests, because those are things that you tend to need in large amounts. Um, stations, or <laughs> well, LTN stations specifically in here. Um, more, low density structures and I've whacked this all full of um, efficiency there's no productivity modules in an attempt to get a bit more out because I was I was finding that I wasn't able to produce this fast enough at one point uh, what's going on up here more more science more 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 science um, <laughs> oh artillery shells that's a, that's a definitely important oh nuclear stuff being done up here so we've got centrifuges and then all of the nuclear power stuff being done up here um, and also recycling facilities and pulverizers by the looks of it 
skipped over the um, there's core mining drills being made here and the, the the umbrella defenses here these are absolutely vital to protect against coronal mass ejections which you've probably seen a few of if you've been following the uh, the channel this is where I used to barrel up um, all the various fluids I've stopped doing that now because there are better ways to transport stuff around um, and it's and barrels are just a headache to deal with building up armor at least up to um to the level two power armor i'm gonna I've, I've also got a thruster suit now which i use all the time because i don't seem to be going into combat and the thruster suit is quite handy because it allows me to fly around and survive in space that's quite important <coughs> meteorite defenses so we've grown this out to what that's about 14 of them that's uh, quite, quite a lot but that'll protect against well it, it'll it has a good chance of protecting against almost any meteorite strike so that's uh, that's that's good having all of that we're building, oh, we're building rocket silos in here as well, it turns out. Um, but only the basic rocket silo, not the cargo rocket silo. And I've got one of those here, and that's quite enough. Rocket parts, satellites here, um, engines for... Oh, here we go. Here's all the, the more advanced space stuff. So the, the cargo rocket silo and the landing pad for it, um, which are then sprung up over here, so I can do all my um, interplanetary transfers and stuff. Although I've got some better ideas for that, so there's going to be a bit of reworking going on for this. And then here, this horrible, horrible mess around this area is making up all of the stuff that I need to take into space. So we've got the space belts, we've got the space scaffolding, we've got rocket parts. Um, in fact, all of this is for making rocket parts and to some extent the belts as well. So all of this is just crammed in here because it was a bit of a sort of a, an afterthought in that I thought, well, I'll, I'll sp have a second, second sort of 90 degree bus coming off across here with all of the things I need for space. And it... To be honest, it wasn't really a very good idea. It's just made a, it's just made a horrible, horrible mess here. And I'm going to need to move that off the bus and just do it somewhere else. And then finally, up here, we've got all the, this whole area where I've got masses of delivery cannons, and these are also going a bit sort of a bit out of fashion, should we say? Because now that I've done enough enough of the research on the um, rockets uh, reusability, it's now got to the point where using rockets is actually more efficient than using delivery cannons. At least as long as you have. 500 stacks of stuff you want to take somewhere so where's this one firing at it's loading up at the moment i can't tell um but it could be that yeah there's a couple of places where um i decided it's probably still going to be worth using the delivery cannons because they don't need 500 stacks to be dropped in at once like um taking water to miokin for example i only need that in relatively small quantities to keep the um the washing going on going on so i've got an ice cannon that's still firing there um i think i've still got uh, vulcanite being fired at one of the planets because it needs a small, small amount of it for making the uh, the next step of the one of the stages in making I think it might be vitamelange I can't really remember but there's there's it doesn't it's not required in particularly large quantities so I'm just shipping it over a sort of a stack at a time that will probably change in the in the uh, in the near future but at the moment the these um, delivery cannons have served me well throughout most of series two. <clears throat> And all of the dishes here are doing the uh, transfer of data between the t different planets to make sure that the uh, the right amount of each each resource is ends up in the right place. And I did have a big rack of these in the middle. It's probably sort of from about here to about maybe about here, in fact, all the way to about here, and maybe some of these as well. We're all firing at my um, at my space station because that got through a lot of resources. But that's but because that gets through so much, I've now started shipping it all up by rocket. Uh, so. I don't know why this one hasn't launched. Maybe it's oh, there's nothing coming in. It's probably it's probably not full yet, and there's enough stuff in space that's just carrying on happily. And then there's a little bit at the top here making up modules because relatively recently I decided that making modules was a good idea, and I needed to have lots and lots of those everywhere. And they're quite they they're they're not too expensive to make, at least up to tier three. The more the, the higher tiers get a bit more expensive and a bit crazier, but uh, the lower tiers they just you can just flood them through. They just take a little while to produce because there's for each each subsequent level you need three of the previous one, which is why there's more of these machines down here. So all of this stuff, in fact, basically all of this, <laughs> is essentially there to transport stuff up into space. So if I have a look at my space station <clears throat> up here, this is, this station is entirely built around creating uh, the space science research packs. So we've got a load of machines here. We've got so we're doing some coal liquefaction here to keep the oil levels up on the station on the space station because we need to make lube which comes from heavy oil. We need to make um, uh, various other things that require petrol petroleum gas and possibly even some that require light oil. I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, so there's that's being made up here and then we've got a load of machines here that are doing things like making making the the, the resources that are used up here things like the supercomputers and um, various cooling things and the thermofluid which flows around and is you it's used in the cooling and you put in hot thermo you put in cold thermofluid 
it gets heated up in the process and spits out warmer thermofluid, which you can then re-chill again. But a certain amount of it is lost each time, so we need a machine here constantly making a, a little dribble of it um, and keeping this tank topped up to, well, 11k apparently. Then we've got these things that take the warm thermofluid and turn it into uh, cool thermofluid. <laughs> then over here we take the cool and turn it into cold, and the cold and then um, the cold and some and turn it into extra cold or super cooled at, at minus 273. Uh, and these these all work together in sort of in series to, to, to sort of take the um, to essentially take it down each time it goes through. It, some of it will be outputted at the colder temperature, and it'll spit some of the warm stuff back out again to go around and be recycled again. Uh, the other thing that you need a lot of for um, for making for making science packs is is the memory cards. And so we've got a machine here that's making those, and we're shipping up these substrates from from down on Norvis because that's a cheaper way of doing it. Because you can combine several pieces of resource into a, into one single substrate and then ship them all up in the, in, in stacks in the rocket, and it's, it's far more efficient. So I'm bringing those up from from the ground. As you can see, there's lots of them on this belt here. And then in these machines polish them up so they can be used, which can only be done in space. This machine makes them into the actual memory sticks, and again, that can only be done in space. And then they're dropped off onto this belt here, and I don't know why this has stopped. Um, it thinks it's run out of substrate. Interesting, we've run out of chemical gel. I'll have to have a look into that at some point, because that shouldn't happen. Um, uh, let's have a quick look. Chemical gel's made somewhere along... Right, oh, here it is. And that's run out. That's run out of petroleum gas. So there's something, something odd going on up here. Yeah, this t this tank's empty. This tank's not very full. We've run out of coal. That's why. So I need another rocket to bring up a load more coal, and then things will start being start running again. Fortunately, memory cards get recycled, so you can reuse them. Um, so after the memory cards are made, they're then wherever it is here. They're then pushed out onto a belt. They're shipped down to all of the, and then down here we've got all of the various different science packs being made. So here is this 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 section here is making the uh, is making the data for the astronomic science packs, and that involves looking through these telescopes and uh, exposing these what are they, what does it call them um, observation frames that are being made in these machines. And so there's various different types. We've got one here doing um, UV observation. We've got one doing visible, and this was presumably then IR. Yes. Um, so we're producing those in the, the three different types. They're not very sensibly coloured. I mean, I'd have made one purple one. Um, yeah, yellow is probably quite good for visible, or green for visible, and then um, uh, red for infrared, but never mind. They're being fed round into these um, astro astronometrics facilities, which extracts the data from the plates and puts it onto one of these memory cards, which there are, do, does seem to be a shortage of, as I've mentioned, but oh well. Uh, they're then fed round, uh, so these are com producing combined um, data memory cards, some sort of multispectral ones, and they're all fed into these supercomputers, which analyse it and then spit it out onto, um, onto the belt that goes up here. Why is that stopped? No green observation data. Okay, so this is all this is grinding to a bit of a halt at the moment. It needs a bit of maintenance doing on it by the looks of it. But never mind. We'll look at that in a bit. So that makes the blue um, blue cube things, the uh, astronom astronometric catalogs, these things, which are fed up here. These computers turn them into astronometric um, insights, which are then fed round here. Uh, they're combined with other insights, the um, the pink ones and the orange ones or the green ones I forget um, pink ones and green ones there we go although I might need to change this recipe since I seem to run out of uh, pink ones they're then turned into these yellow cards which is significant data that you can then use along with the uh, blue insights and the blue catalogs in order to make the actual science packs themselves um, this machine stopped so I could run out of significant data so this will then spit out the actual useful science packs you can turn into the into the um, into the relevant uh, in, into uh, you can actually put into your labs to do the research so it's quite a long process to make them they're then spat out onto this belt here and fed on these belts all the way down here and then back up to my labs at the other end of the base. Next we've got, um, what's this one, this is the purple science which is what, energy science? Yes, energy science. So along here it's the same sort of general idea, we're making plasma to make, uh, yeah, plasma to make um, ion streams which then get go into these uh, EM facilities to get turned into um, the various different types of data that we need for the, uh, for the for the energy science, these all get fed, and we've got and then we've got nuclear equivalent over here, and um, spectral analysis here. Again, they're all fed into computers in exactly the same way that will then spit out the catal the uh, catalogs. And this time, we get purple cubes out that go up the up and up another belt. Beyond that, we've got the same sort of thing for is this energy? Is this oh, this is biological science over here? Uh, and this does sort of I don't know green and squishy things. So we've got along here, we're making um, 
biological samples are these called and so we're making bio sludge and then we're turning that into pink sludge which we're turning into pots of pink sludge which we're turning into genetic data which we're turning into oak roof <laughs> yeah into then these uh biomass and these biomass things are bits of sort of organic material that we can feed out we can turn them into bio sludge or we can feed them out the other way and then they'll be turned into and then we expose them to to plasma or to um to a beating with <laughs> with these mechanical machines or to um to more biological stuff or to do genetic stuff with them i'm not sure exactly it's all it's, and, and each of those again produces data in much the same way that we can then turn into the uh, into the biological catalogs which are these green cubes and again as, as as before they get fed up on another belt next to the next to the other ones the fourth one is down here where we've got the um the the mechanical science where we make boxes of of cleverness and then we feed those through machines that torture them in various ways this one this one crushes them this one stretches them this one heats them up this one freezes them and then they're all turned into um into the orange cubes and they go those go off and each of those go off up this tree here and we've got the same sort of facilities for making the insights for each of the colors and then the science packs for each of the colors so it's all a sort of a it's all sort of bringing it all together at this point and then here we can spit out the sciences we've got these belts that go all the way along here and feed all of those science packs up into the into the research stations down here now the way it's designed is that each of the each of the science packs is i think i believe is supposed to sort of test you in a slightly different way so for example this one um the, the main challenge of this one was getting um, was dealing with all the scrap that's produced so when you when you produce these science packs um take this one for example we're producing huge amounts of uh contaminated scrap along with the science pack so that all gets fed off and has to be cleaned up and and recycled and turned into useful things again so the challenge here is i mean the, the obvious thing to do is just to put it into a chest and forget about it but the amount of stuff that's produced by it your chest would fill up very very quickly so you do you um, and you can't even then you can't even turn it into into something else and recycle it into something and dump that in the chest so at one point when i was doing the earlier sciences which some of which spit out a little bit of scrap um and it was the end the make making the memory card spits out a bit of scrap as well so i was um i was just turning that into landfill because it compacted down quite nicely but now it's got to the point where that just isn't practical so down here i've now got a massive recycling station that turns the um all of the scrap that comes in into ores which can then be smelted in these machines here and turned into actual useful useful um, stuff that we can then feed back into the system. So it goes round and round. I mean, yeah, you don't get as much out as you put in. Uh, some of it is, is is lost in the process, so it's not self-sufficient. But it means you get some of it back, and it gives you and it gives you a little bit of a bonus there. Um, the biological science has a lot of sort of feedback loops in it. So you make up the um, the biomass samples here, and those go back along here to be turned into bio sludge. And that's a more than you get more than 100% back doing that. So it, it works as sort of as a loop quite nicely. So you get um, you, you can just leave that running, and you'll get loads of stuff through. Uh, the other ones, I'm not quite sure that they don't have quite such the obvious. Um, here is what you're doing here. I mean, this one is perhaps about energy management because this particular machine here uses enormous amounts of power by de um, I've got it running at 80% below normal at the moment um, because I put in these efficiency modules and that was one of the reasons I started looking into modules um, but even so it's still using 20 megawatts which is probably about as much as um, actually it's not running at the moment so I can't I can't show you but uh, it would be in the t there's only one of them and it would be in the top few things on the in the in the base for amount of power used um, and then I suppose this one is just sort of sheer throughput of all of the different things that you need to manage. Um, so maybe that's the, maybe that's the challenge with this one. And these are all these are all just for the tier one of each of those science packs. So if I have a look in the um, in this lab over here, you can see we've got the ground-based sciences here, rocket science, which is the first one you put together in space, and then the first four um, uh, space science packs, and those are all tier one. Then we've got tier two tier three and tier four to worry about and then the, the deep space science packs as well so it's going so there's i'm assuming that these are going to, the the next tier is going to be a similar sort of idea to the tier one packs but it's going to be a bit more challenging perhaps you need to put more have more throughput more more things being pa passed through it we'll see we'll find out what, what what's required when i uh, when i start making those but the other thing that all of these require is each one requires a new special material so the um the astronomic science requires beryllium which is a, another new is, is a new metal you have to go off and find this one requires does this one actually require another new metal i don't remember oh oh yes this one's holmanite this one requires holmanite somewhere in the process um but not in particular yeah here it goes up here i think it's holmanite um 
yes, Holmium, which is made from Holmite. This one requires Vitamalange, which is sort of a, um, a biological thing that you can dig up, almost like an ore. I'm not quite sure how that works. Maybe it's, maybe it's a bit like coal. Um, and then this one requires, I've forgotten the name of it, um, Iridium, which is, I don't know, it's another, it's another metal. And each of those, you have to go off to a planet and find them. So each planet you discover, um, it will it will have various stats for it. So, you can, for example, if I click on Frost, for example, you can see this is a planet that has lots of cryonite, which is good for uh, chilling things. It has a bit of coal, a bit of beryl, a little bit of copper, some uranium and so on, all the way down, um, and very, very small amounts of iron ore. So you can go off and, and set up an outpost on these other planets and dig up the additional supplies that you need. So on Frost, for example, this is one of this is one of the, I think this was the second planet I set up, set up an additional mine on. So I've come out here, <coughs> I've come out here, and I've set up a mine up here that's digging up beryllium, and then I've got and, and cryonite up here. So those are being fed down and used, processed throughout the machine here, throughout the system here. And we've got well, this this part along here is processing the oil to get out useful things I need from it, or coal into oil rather, and then making delivery cannon capsules. And then on this side we're processing the cryonite. And over here, we're processing the uh, the beryllium, uh, the barrel to get beryllium, and passing it down here. So this, this can then be shipped out by the rocket or by the delivery cannon. I've also started building big nuclear power plants on each of these uh, planets, just to, to, so that power isn't, isn't a worry. And so I've done the same sort of thing on various other planets as well. If we have a look at this one, here we've got Hol Holmanite. Um, I'm going to zoom out a bit further for this one because it's a bit bigger. This is one of my slightly later ones, so I started using trains at this point, and that made things much easier just to, to spread out a bit more rather than using belts. Um, so as you can see, I've got a little train network here that's picking up all of the different um, resources I need, like stone and coal, and holmium, the important one for this particular planet. And then they're all being fed around here, where again I've got exactly the same. I've got the same sort of system processing oils down to get it's because I'm going to need things like sulfur and plastic and and, and acids. And then this is all being fed across again in exactly the same way to make the delivery cannon capsules. But up here, instead, instead we're processing things in a slightly different way because we're processing holmium, and that takes a different series of processes to produce the, uh, the the metal that's then shipped out by delivery cannon. And we've got, and then we've got a few other little bits and pieces like processing the iron and processing the copper. I've got a similar thing on which one's Kothar? I've forgotten. Oh yeah, Kothar is where we're making iridium. So again, it's exactly the same sort of general idea. We've got a train system picking up iron, coal, and iridite on this one, and coal from over and, and copper from over there, plus stone. And um, we've got a uranium mine to keep the uh, to keep the fuel running. Nuclear power plant up here. Same sort of thing for processing oil and making the delivery cannon capsules, and then processing the iridite into iridium over here. Um, and again, that's that's nicely caught up at the moment because everything's ground to a halt. I've also started putting uh, meteorite defences on all of my planets because I was getting fed up of having things smashed up by the meteorites. <laughs> but otherwise, it's exactly the same as the other one. And I've got the same thing again on, on Tulip. Here we've got we've got a Vitamelange uh, mine. But otherwise, it's exactly the same. Picking up all of the ores I need. Um, it looks like copper isn't, doesn't exist on this planet. So that's going to be shipped in by um, by delivery cannon, as, as is uranium by the looks of it, and, um, and vulcanite. Okay, so they're all being shipped in just because they're not available up here. And then passed around as, and being processed as required. And it's exactly the same sort of thing. We've got um, oil making the uh, delivery cannon capsules. And then over here we've got uh, Vitamelange processing. So taking the Vita, Vita raw and processing it down so it's ready to be shipped out. So that's... That's yeah. I mean, uh, there's another one on uh, Miokin, which is similar, but this this one's a lot more basic because this was the first one I produced. So I shipped in everything I needed, including including all of the uh, delivery cannon capsules. There's loads of them in the uh, in the boxes here. And then so I've, this is just a a, a, um, a vulcanite mine, a big power generation facility, and a process, small processing facility to to deal with that. The biggest challenge of this one actually was getting water up here in order to do the um, the vulcanite washing. So I'm bringing that in now as ice, which is carefully frozen on frost, and then shipped over here, and then melted, so we get water in this um, in the storage tank that could be used for uh, use for the use for the washing process. So those are, that's the um, that is um, essentially those are those are my outposts. So we've got Norvis, which is the main base that I showed you around first, and then the space station up in orbit, which is doing all of the um, the science, the, uh, the space science. Uh, Henki Sesui, which is producing the um, uh, holmium. Uh, Frost is producing beryl and cryonite. Kothar is producing iridium. Myokin is producing vulcanite. And Tulip is producing vitamelange. Now there are loads more planets I can go off to. Let's sort this into tree, tree mode. So I'm in the uh, Kalidus system, and I and I believe I'm currently limited to the Kalidus system because I don't think my rockets can go into stellar. Although to be honest, I've not checked. Um, but in in this system, we have all these various different um, different planets, 
along here which have various different resources so this one is a very very oily planet this one's a copper planet and so on and and the uh, these affect what you can what, what's on those planets what you can get from them and uh, what what resources are available you've also got these numbers after them as well so um, there's the size of the planet here which is shown so you can you can tell how how far out you can explore before you'll start to run out of planet and that hasn't been a problem for me anywhere it's that I don't I don't seem to have had an issue with the, with available space there's the uh, robot interference threat level and that tells you how how dangerous that area is for, for your um, flying robots so for example um, most of these are quite low but uh, Norvis is the no no um, most of these are uh, yeah okay so Norvis is very low down at one but Norvis orbit is a bit higher at six so I've been losing quite a lot of my uh, robots up there and I have to ship new ones up there every so often just to uh, to, to keep to keep to keep it going and it looks like if I'd been using bots on any of these other planets then things would have been quite a lot worse and I would have had to uh, ship a lot of them out there but fortunately um, once construction was done I'm not relying on bots at all on these planets. Then you've got the uh, threat level, which tells you how basically how many biters there are on the planet. So you've got the um, Norvis is the base baseline at 33%. That's sort of what I'm what I'm used to. You'll notice that all of the planets I've gone off to have been 0% because, to be honest, if I don't have to deal with biters, then I'd rather not. It's easier. It's, it's, e it's easier not to put it that way. But you can get ones up to um, apparently this one's 100% threat level. So if we have a look at this this planet. Yeah, there's 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 quite a lot of biters on this one, so I think I probably won't go here unless I absolutely have to. It's just kind of full. Um, and then there's sort of there's there's in between ones, so you get down to sort of. Um, if I wanted to go to this planet, for example, then let's have a quick look. There's wait for it to draw it. Yeah, there's there's some biters around, but it's a pretty pretty light, pretty minor. Um, Although having explored it, maybe they're going to start um, expanding out now, and I might have to do sort of planetary resets before I go to any of them. <laughs> we'll we'll see. But yeah, this this is a sort of threat level I could probably cope with without too much difficulty because there's there's not very many of them. I could probably take these out with a with a submachine gun and nothing else. But I would need to worry about having actually actually having defences on these planets. So I'd have to have to put a wall all the way around the outside. Okay, so that's that is all of the uh, that's the sort of the other planets on this one. Well, it's. This this is sort of this this planet is mostly fairly vanilla. Um, I've not done anything too. I've not done anything you couldn't really do in vanilla on here. I don't think, apart from you know launching cargo rockets. I've got things like my defences. I've got the uh, dragon's teeth, rows of rows of turrets using uranium ammo, um, and uh, flame and flamethrowers. All of this is then protected by uh, trains that come out to the. Uh, to, I've got a train that will come out and automatically keep these outposts loaded up with burner inserters, turrets, walls, repair packs, and am ammunition and fuel and and liquid fuel as well uh, just to keep everything running and there's sort of what the, well, there's only 15 bots on this one but that's that's enough so as you can see when when some biters come in that's good timing the um, flamethrower turrets will open up the bullet turrets will open up and they'll all get finished off quite easily why isn't that one linked up there's a <laughs> there's an underground pipe missing there so that turret isn't going to work never mind as you can see, though, these these are quite capable of, uh, of of taking care of themselves. So it means I can now I can go off to another planet without having to worry about uh, defences. And I've got these set up all the way around the outside of the base, mostly ideally at check uh, to choke points wherever possible, like that one. But sometimes it's not so possible, and so I've got bigger walls like these ones. Um, there's a nice small one, small one. That's a, that's a bigger than I'd like them to be, because it's there's a sort of a, there's a a decision to be made between how, how far out you want to push and where you can find the checkpoint, uh, choke points in order to, to, to limit the amount of wall you have to build. But I do have a wall of this sort of style, including that tiny one down there, going all the way around the outside of my factory. And um, so the whole whole place is just completely protected now, and that does seem to be working. Um, I've got more nuclear power over here. I've got two quad power power plants. I'm not sure why this one, these two are running and those two aren't. They should all work in sync, but never mind. And they've all got massive quantities of um, of, of uh, what do you call it? Uh, steam storage in these tanks. And this is to protect me against the coronal mass ejections. When a coronal mass ejection hits, you need enormous amounts of power for your um, for, for, your, for your umbrella defence. In fact, if I look back, sort of many many hours. No, it's not. It's not. It's not. It, you, you can't see them on here, unfortunately. Um, but you get a massive spike from the umbrella, umbrella defense, which just drains all of the power out of your <laughs> out of your systems. And yeah, which is why I've also got this massive array of um, accumulators down here, again for exactly the same purposes. Um, then I've got a big smelting array over here. I consider this to now be a bit outdated. I plan one of my um, things to do in this series is now to, is, to, is to upgrade this and bring it up to a sort of a 
a more efficient and more effective um, system and, and not have issues like this where for some reason there's some iron in the middle, there's some steel right in the middle of the um, <laughs> copper smelting. But as you can see we've got copper smelting, we've got iron smelting, we've got stone smelting in inverted commas, making bricks out of it anyway, and steel at the bottom here. Um, and that was, as you can see by the wall around it, this was made before I had, um, before I built the out, out, full outer perimeter wall, so it's uh, it's, it's defended in, in, in and of itself as well. And inside here we've got mines scattered around. I went through a phase of um, of building mines that were neatly fitting into a, a single roboport area. Um, and the idea behind that was that you could plonk down a single roboport and then build everything from that, and it would defend it. And, and you could use that single roboport to then defend it. So it was a ni it was quite a nice nice way of doing things when I when I had outposts that were um, being threatened by by biters. But since then I've now moved on moved on, and now I've just got just slapped down a um, a nice mine like that, and then maybe. Some of them are running off um, central centralised power. Some of them, like this one, are running off their own little solar arrays, uh, which is quite nice because it means I don't need to run power cables all the way out to them. So as you can see, the, the, this is a little self-contained area. This outpost is a self-contained area. And it means I don't have to, yeah, as I say, I don't have to run massive long chains of power poles off to get, to get power to wherever it's needed. I do make sure that all of the big things, are like like the smelting array, are running off the, uh, the central, central nuclear and solar, though. That's because um, they use so much power that they need it. Otherwise, it's a it's just pretty as I say this is a pretty standard vanilla um, setup. So we've got we've got mines scattered around. As I say vanilla, I'm using LTN stations for it, so it's it's not quite vanilla, but it's mostly but it's it's not there's nothing particularly space exploration -y about it. So I'm not gonna, I'm not going to talk about it at great length. So that's what I've been up to over the last um, how long have I been playing for? Last eight days and seventeen hours. My God, that's a long time to be playing this for. Um, I don't want to think about that. That's what I've been doing over the last, yeah, eight and a half days. <laughs> Getting it up to this point. And so, for the, for the, um, for the, next, for the next series, well, my plans, my, my initial plans are to redo the smelting, as I said. I want to, I want to start doing the, um, the, I want to start using modules and beacons to make things a bit more efficient and a bit faster and just generally a bit better. I also want to start doing the vulcanite type smelting where you mix in some vulcanite with your ore and that gets you an extra 50% or so I think on top of what you would get what you would get just from the ore itself. <coughs> so I'm going to have to build that up somewhere. I'm, I need to, it needs to be somewhere that's reasonably well reason I'd like it to be reasonably central because I think there's going to be a lot of a lot of trains going there. Perhaps perhaps here would do quite well. Um my circuit facilities I didn't mention these actually but these are these are again fairly straightforward, fairly vanilla. We've got stations feeding in the various components for, for making the circuits, making green circuits on site and then feeding them up and making red circuits, which are then taken away by train. Same just over here for blue circuits. And I've got another facility over on the other side of the base making them making green circuits. So those all get onto onto the um onto the railway onto the uh, LTN system that way and can be delivered wherever they're needed. So yeah, I'm going to need to have a smelting facility in somewhere, perhaps down here or up here. That's, those look quite like quite good spaces. Um, then I want to work on getting everything delivered by rocket instead of using delivery cannons. So I'm going to build up a big rocket farm sort of spaceport thing on, on Norvit. Uh, I'm going to build a, a system up building all of the different, uh, building the rocket parts on Norvis, I think, because that's probably the most efficient place to do it. So essentially like this factory over here that's building the rocket parts, but doing it much, much on a much much larger scale. I mean, even with these speed modules in here, it's not. It takes quite a long time to actually produce a, a rocket part. Um, so I need to get some sort of logistic system together for delivering all the parts all over the place to wherever they're needed. Um, and I need to make them much much faster. I did do the maths and I worked out that to produce, um, I think, to produce one rocket part per second would take about 570 assembly machines. So. I might not go to quite that level, um, I might, but again, I might, maybe I'll, maybe with beacons I can bring that down a bit. We'll, we'll see how that goes. So that's going to require some thought, and I'm going to need lots and lots of rocket parts like that because I want to start bringing all of the resources around, transporting the bulk resources around by rocket. So on my remote planets, I've started to do this on Tulip, but only on a very very small scale. It's not uh, not Tulip, sorry, Frost, uh, but it's not working fast enough yet but here we've got a rocket that's being loaded with all of the different supplies that come from uh, from frost and then be, this is flying back to Norvis to dump it what I want to have is rockets being filled up with each of them in each of the individual supplies separately uh, so that you can say I need I need beryllium 
bang, here's 500 stacks of it by rocket. And I can do, and I'll have that in on the space station. So the space station will have a big array of landing pads, one for each resource that comes in. So I don't need to do faffing around and sorting by bot, because that's where I'm getting all of that robot attrition and getting all my robots destroyed. It works well, well enough for my sort of my first uh, station here. Uh, that's this one. So I've got this one rocket pad that's bringing it. So everything's going via Norvis and then being brought up to here, or possibly coming by delivery cannon and being unloaded to here. And it's then sort of and it's then unloaded into this into this uh, warehouse and it's then sorted by the by the uh, by the uh, logistics bots. But logistics bots crash and blow up frequently. So um, I mean I don't know. Can, can I can I tell? Um, all time losses. Okay, I've lost only lost 876 um, log logistics bots. But the more you have, the more you rely on them, the more you lose, and the worse it runs. So I want to move away from those if I if I can. So that's um, so yeah. I want to, I want to start transporting stuff around by rocket. I also then and, and that is all in in sort of working towards the next part stage of the plan, which is to make the next tier of all of these science packs. And I think I'm going to do that separately from this this has worked quite well for getting all of the tier one stuff but it's getting a bit a bit of a tangle and there's some very long belts in here so these for example these green green um, analyses that are being uh, brought sort of catalogs that are being brought along here there's a huge amount of wasted resource just sitting on this belt and these each one of these ties up something like um, well, let's see, we bring in one and then it spits up two data cards. So each one of those is worth at least two data cards and then up here where we turn it into... I'm, I'm not sure. It's, it's, there's, a, there's, a lot, there's an enormous number of data cards tied up in all of these um, all of these catalogues and it feels a bit wasteful. I'd rather have... Um, I, I want to try and come up with a slightly better system. And I also find that these, these belts... They're okay, but they take up a lot of space, and they're a horrible, horrible tangle to work with. When you when you get to about here and go, oh, okay, I need to have I don't know uh, chemical gel down here. So then you then have to worm it all the way through the bus, and it's just and you get these hor horrible snarls and tangles and things, and it's a bit of a mess. So I want to try and separate them out a bit more, so I can do it all a bit more neatly, and that's going to involve space trains and well, who knows? We shall see where, how that goes because it's going to be a big job. Um. But yeah, that's that's my that is my sort of my game plan for series three. Um, I've just installed this to-do list mod actually, so let's let's set this up. Okay, so these are my uh, here we go. If I put, I put all my um, all my tasks in here, and then we can sort of stare at the prior stare at them and go right, which one shall I do first? And I think this is probably going to be the order I do it in. Um, now, tier two space science is, is going to be a massive project and have lots of subtasks in it. Smelting with vulcanite shouldn't be too bad. I just need to. Um, I think this this mostly requires. Um, that's just going to require a few steps to get it to get it up and running, so that's not going to be too bad. This one's going to be a little bit more complicated. This one's going to require enormous amounts of work in, on all of the different planets, um, because I'm not really producing the rocket. The, I'm not really producing the resources fast enough uh, in, for them to be uh, in order to be in order to be able to um, ship them out by rocket, because it takes forever to load up a rocket when you're trickling out sort of a few um, resources per second. And then this one, who knows? <laughs> that's going to be a that's going to be a long way off in the distance. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But this is my yeah. This I think this is probably going to be what what I need to do and what I get on with. So I hope you'll join me for all of that. Wow, this has been a rather long episode. I um <laughs> to, I guess there's been a lot to talk about. I've been up to a lot of stuff over the over uh, over time on here. So um. I hope you're looking forward to this as much as I am, and um, maybe I'll have a decent chunk of this smelting system done by next time we talk. <laughs> I hope I'll see you then, and I hope people are still watching this this um, this episode, even though it's gone to what, almost 40 minutes so far. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll try and keep them down to about 20 minutes in the future. <laughs> but yeah, until next time, well, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.